To make digital data, the analog wave is converted into a stream of numbers, and the numbers are recorded instead of the wave. This process is referred to as analog to digital conversion, or ADC. To play the music back, it converts the numbers back into the analog waves by digital to analog conversion. And the analog waves comes through the output, such as your speakers. Unless there is some kind of corruption in the file, it should play the same sound every time. So how are sounds collected? The sounds are processed using converters, which perform sampling. That is, they sample the height of the sound at particular intervals in the wavelength. For example, if one byte is used, there is 256 possible heights. This is done by sampling rate and sampling precision. The sampling rate involves how many samples are taken per second. Sampling precision involves how many different gradations there are possible. By increasing the sampling rate and precision rate, you can reduce the likelihood of errors and produce a sound that is closer to perfect. On a CD, numbers produced are stored as bytes. The data are burned into the CD as a series of bits. This is essentially a set of instructions for how the computer should play the sounds. The fundamental job of the CD player is to focus the laser on tiny little bumps. The laser reflects light off the CD player and the sensor detects changes in reflectivity caused by the bumps. The electronics in the drive interpret those changes to read the bits that make up the bytes. If there is a scratch on your CD, which might cause a packet of bytes to be misread. Your computer uses error correction techniques to try and recover. And there are some great CS Unplugged activities for exploring error correction techniques, where students realize that they can create solutions to such problems. Using storage can include CD-ROM, which is computer data, or CDDA, which is audio. But what about music on your iPod or other music players? An MP3 player is essentially a data storage device with software that allows music data to be transferred to the device. MP3 players contain a series of components such as displaying memory, microcompressors, a data port, an audio port, among other parts that we'll explore in the digital systems unit. The MP3 compression format creates files that don't exactly sound like the original recording, but in order to decrease the size of the file significantly, MP3 encoders have to lose audio information. If you're moving audio files from your computer to an MP3 player, your computer rips MP3 files from an audio CD. The audio is digitally compressed and encoded to create an MP3 file. These files are then transferred and played on your device. Let's have a look at some examples of how you can explore sound in your classroom. Students could create or follow music symbols for a particular song. Students could create patterns and then swap symbols and play one another's songs. In drama, students could listen to the sound of an animal and represent the dynamic of the sound with their body movement. Teachers could also play the sound of an animal or other sound and students could guess what the wavelength might look like by drawing it or perhaps recreating it with the body movement. This area offers opportunities to link sound representation with exploring how sound travels.